sabi natin, the chain of infection. Okay. Infection. Sir, what are, what, what are these chains of infection? Always remember, this is actually the cycle. Okay. The cycle of infection. So, this is like a, an interrelated chains that would now be interconnected to, to one another to produce an infection. Nagkakaintindihan? So, there's a lot of questions that might be asked from you, okay, when we talk about this chain of infection. Why? Because from the causative agent down to the acquiring of the disease condition, there's a process that it would now take. And our main goal as a healthcare provider is to cut or break all those chains so that no one is going to acquire the disease condition. Clear tayo doon? Yes, o sige, ang unang-una natin, the first chain that we're going to talk about, here are the elements. Okay? What are the elements of your chain of infection? Number one, syempre, so what is the first element, guys? This is now what you call as the causative, causative agent. Okay? Causative agent, guys, question, what? Why is it important for us to talk about the causative infection? Why is it important for us to know the pathogenic this okay pathogenic okay sources of infection? Why? Oh, very good Bianca to know how we kill it. Tama naman, correct? Yes, to know the exact antibiotic or the exact antiviral or the exact, okay, the exact antimicrobial to be given to the client. So, for example, remember, all the causative agents are pathogenic sources, correct? So, this would now be anything, okay, anything that would now bring about an infection, Anything that would bring, okay, about an infection. Yun daw yun eh. Correct? So, for example, we have now your protozoa. Okay, pro these are just examples. Ha? Of course, there's a lot of pathogenic uh, pathogenic sources. No, So, sabi natin, we have now your protozoa. Okay? It could either be virus or it could either be bacteria. Correct? Yes, so, when we already know the sources, of course, we already know how to treat them. Yun ang importante doon. So, remember, the first chain is the causative agent. We would want to know the drug. Yun mismo ang ating goal dyan. We would want to know the specific drug to be given to the client so that we could kill the causative agent. Correct? Correct. Oh, now, number two. Okay. Remember that this causative agent needs to multiply. Tama mali? Yes. And when we talk about the place, okay, where this pathogenic agent could now multiply, we call that as what? Come on. Come on. The second element is what you call as your reservoir. Reservoir. O, di ba? Nakakaano lang yan. Nakaka-German reservoir. Ganon! Nakaka-reservoir daw. Correct. So, when we talk about this uh, reservoir, it is where our causative agent is going to multiply. Correct? Multiply. Okay? Multiply and replicate itself. Clear? Clear. So that when they already have multiplied, they can infect another cells to another cell. Clear tayo from one cell to another cell. So, what happens now? So, when the reservoir would now be there, they are going to multiply. Now, what are the types of reservoir? Remember, when we talk about the reservoir, it doesn't necessarily mean that it, it, is, an, uh, it is a living object. Hindi kailangan. It could either be a living okay, object or inanimate object in animate object ibig sabihin even objects no for example uh you have your faucets di ba it could be the reservoir eh. you have the faucet the doorknob okay anything that the patient touches 
wherein the patient has placed that causative agent at automatic. Okay. Yung place na yon, the bacteria or causative agent can multiply. Clear tayo doon. Okay. So, sabi natin, they can incubate and multiply. Doon sa mga areas where they can multiply. That's what you call your reservoir. Clear tayo doon? So, sabi natin, it could either be living daw. It might be... Um, It might be animals, okay, possible, it might be animals, or it could either be person, or it could either be insect, okay, it could either be your doorknob, okay, doorknob, and your faucet, okay, faucet. Ibig sabihin, when we talk about inanimate, those are your fomites. Clear tayo doon? So, fomites. Ibig sabihin, that reserva would now be inanimate. Clear tayo doon. So, madali lang ano. Oh, now, the question is, once the causative agent has already multiplied, what would now be your next chain, guys? Is it the portal of entry or the portal of exit? Oy, may nagsagot ka agad. Para memorize na nila yung chain of infection. Wag na daw natin i-discuss. Tama? Yes, okay. Is it the portal of entry or exit? Come on! Ha? Huh? Is it the portal of entry or exit? Okay. Portal of? Ala. I can hear voices. Hallucination. Tama. Oh, I can hear. <laughs> Sorry. I... I can hear voices now. Portal of entry or exit? Oh, sabi nila. Portal of entry. Mali. Remember, when we talk about the Causative agent that has multiplied. Okay. So, sabi natin, this causative agent needs to, okay, go out first from that reservoir. Clear tayo doon? Oh, from inanimate object, dapat maka-go out muna siya. That's why, go where? Go to the, okay, uh, portal of entry or exit. Portal of exit. Clear? So, number three of your chain is what you call as the portal of exit. Correct? Correct. Now, when we talk about oh, your portal exit, remember, ha, this is a common confusion. Sometimes, the board of examiners would now be asking you to arrange in order your okay, chain of infection. So, sometimes, they will be giving you some options that your portal of entry would now go first. Okay? That's incorrect. So, remember that the causative agent needs to go out first before it could now infest another and could now invade uh, people. Clear po tayo doon? Yes. Oh. So, common confusion. So, uh, always remember that we're going to answer your portal of exit first. Correct? Yes. And then, once the causative agent has come out already from the reserva, what happens now? Then there would now be what you call as the mode of transmission. Correct? Mode of transmission. Oh, guys, why is it important for us to know the mode of transmission? Sabi natin, oh, always remember... Uh, when we talk about the mode of transmission, this is how you're going to acquire it. Whether it could either be orally transmitted or it could be via airborne. Okay? It could either be via droplet. Okay? It could either be via contact. Pwede. Correct? So, sabi natin, this would now be the mode of transmission. Correct? So, sabi... How the bacteria or how the uh, uh, causative agent can be acquired by humans. Okay? So, sabi, so, since we are talking about the mode of transmission, okay, it is very much important for us to talk about the transmission. Okay? Transmission based precaution. That's the most important concept in your mode of transmission. Because we would want to break the barrier. We would want to break how these things are going to be acquired. 
we are going to cut the chain of mode of transmission by how we are going to make use of our PPEs. Tama ba? Correct? Your personal protective equipment. So, we'll be talking about those things later on. Correct? Kasi importante nga siya. Okay. Plus, what are those things that we are going to implement as well? Okay? As an additional. So, sabi natin, of course, the standard precaution. Di ba? So, that could also break the barrier. But we are going to itemize each and every okay items under your standard precaution later on. Are we talking about the needles? Are we talking about now the linens? Correct? Are we talking about the hand hygiene? Those are the things that's going to come out when comes now to your... Okay. When comes now to your uh, uh, mode of transmission. So, ganon. So, right now, we are just going to talk about first all of those chains. Correct? O, sige. Parang sinasummarize kasi natin. Okay? Everything is going to be summarized when we when we talk about the chain of infection. Oh, now the question: After the mode of transmission, what's going to happen now? Oh, once okay, the uh, bacteria already has reached the mode of transmission. It will now be freely going somewhere else, waiting for the next item. Okay, what is now the next item? Sabi natin. The next item would now be your susceptible host. Correct? Yes. So, there would now be the portal of entry. Correct? Portal of entry would now be your number 5. Going where? Portal of entry going where? To your sus. Susceptible host. Ah, so when we talk about now your susceptible host, okay, why is it, it is very much important for us to, okay, be specific of the term susceptible. Bakit daw? Because always remember that every one of us, okay, is a host, but not everyone is susceptible. Ay, tama ba? Tama ba, Miss Pineda? Correct. So, we are all, talagang ganun, no? taas ng energy. We are all a host. <laughs> Sabi ko, sasakali ko talaga to si Kay, eh. Dapat siya nagtuturo na ito, eh. Tama? Yes. Okay lang naman. Correct. Sabi kasi, kailangan daw yung, ano, yung energy medyo mababa lang ng konti. Because these are just infection. Tama? Yes. O sige, pababain natin ng konti. Correct, sabi ni Adrian. O, oh, sabi niya, O, oh, uh, we are all a host, but not everyone is susceptible. Question, what increases the susceptibility of the host? O, oh, yun ang question eh. Correct? Ibig sabihin, easily can be acquired by the host. Kasi sabi natin, we can all acquire, but not everyone is susceptible. Correct? Oh, very good may nagsabi, Bianca, impaired immune, si uh, immunocompromised, pure immunity, oh, yung dami ah. In fairness, ang dami niyong alam. O oh, sige, eto na nga, isa-isayin natin. Again, I just need to write the uh, keyword. Remember that all of us are host, but not all are susceptible. Correct? Oh, very important concept. And how are we going to become increased when it comes now to susceptibility? Okay. Increase susceptibility or as follows. Oh, sabi natin ha. Increase susceptibility. Number one, correct kayo dyan. Can we talk about now your, okay, can we talk about now your immunocompromised or suppressed patients? Compromised patient, yes. Immunocompromised patient, correct. For example, the patient is undergoing chemotherapy, correct? Chemotherapy, wherein their WBCs are quite too low already. Delikado ba yon? Yes, they can easily acquire disease condition because their bodies cannot fight off against infection. 
Correct? Remember, all chemotherapeutic drugs, okay, can affect the bone marrow. And the bone marrow produces your RBC, WBC, and platelets. O, oh, ba sabi natin, yung chemotherapy mo daw can affect the bone marrow. And the bone marrow produces your RBC, WBC, and platelets. Correct? And remember, your body's defense would now fall under WBC. Correct? Yes. O, oh, kaya nga, that increases the susceptibility of the host. Correct? Next, how about now radiation therapy? Radiation therapy. Pwede rin? Yes. Anybody would now be undergoing radiation therapy could also lead towards bone marrow depression. Okay tayo dun, ha? So, another. Another that would now increase the susceptibility. Okay. When you will be given now, okay, an, an, um, an immunosuppressant, ibig sabihin, your steroids. Correct? Is your steroid your immunosuppressant? Yes. Those are anti-inflammatory drug that can now suppress what? Your bone marrow. Is still bone marrow ang target natin dyan? Correct? Oh, so, for example, what if uh, what if the patient would now be uh, receiving anti- rejection Okay, drugs. Anti-rejection drugs. O, sabi niya, anti-rejection medication. Medication. O, so, anti-rejection uh, medication for those people who will be having transplant. Tama? Organ transplant. Example, liver transplant. Okay? So, yung transplant of pancreas. O, kidney transplant. Remember, there's a bigger chance of us, okay, having now, okay, an immunosuppression for this. Why? Because we will be receiving a drug that would now become, okay, the one that would now prevent the rejection of these tissues being given to us. Kasi the chance of rejection is quite too high kasi hindi mo naman ang uh, uh, organ yun. Clear tayo doon. Even if you are a family member of that person, is still there's a chance of transplant rejection. Kaya nga, what happens now? So, what happens now is that you will now be given some immunosuppressant. Just like your, okay, okay, sabi natin, Imuran. O, example lang nga, Imuran. Your Imuran is your, o, anti-tissue rejection drug. Tama ba yun? Yes. Eh, ang immuran mo, immunosuppressant just like your steroids that could now suppress your bone marrow. E still, anong target niya? Bone marrow. Question ba? Yes. Tama. Maayos tayo doon? Yes. Now, the question, can I also add this? Kasi this is quite too uh, prevalent uh, nowadays, di ba? So, sabi natin, can you also be susceptible if you belong on a high-risk age? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, example, less than one, too young. Less than one year old, too young. We do also have your too old. Pagka too old, more than 65. Tama? Yes. And of course, sabi natin, why is it uh, very much important for us to include this in the susceptibility issue? Because when we talk about a person less than one year old, not all of the immunity are already developed. Clear tayo doon. So since the patient has an underdeveloped immunity, so what happens now? They are prone now in acquiring this disease condition. Clear tayo doon? And, when we talk about a high risk, of course, our body is a wear and tear. Tama? So, as we grow old, our body tears down. So, that uh, doesn't, okay, exactly exempt, okay, our immunity as well. So, when we, go, uh, when we grow old, so what happens now? Our immunity declines. Tama ba? Yes, o oh, sabi natin na ah, too young under developed system, developed 
Okay. And too old, sabi natin, okay, this is a wear and tear mechanism. Correct? Yes. Clear tayo doon? Clear? Clear. Now, the question, who are the following are the priorities? Sila po ang priority. Okay. Clear tayo doon? Yes. The question now in the actual exam, who are you, just in case that you are going to take care of these patients, oh, the question, who are you going to visit first? Ayan ang tinatanong eh. Visit first. Oh, guys, is it infectious? A person with infection or a person with immuno? Suppression. Immunosuppression. Oh, sabi natin, remember, we need to visit your immunosuppression first. And always remember, all those who are with active infection should be visited last. Clear tayo doon? The question, why is it so important? Okay, bakit daw? To prevent cross-contamination. Tama. Madali eh, di ba? Madali ba? Yes. O, oh, correct. O, oh. guys, by the way, sometimes the Board of Examiner is not too lenient when it comes now to the question. O, oh, sometimes they will be giving you um, who are the following at risk. Okay, in developing disease condition, sometimes they will not be giving you the exact word immunocompress, chemotherapy patients, radiation, steroid, anti-rejection medication was given. Sometimes they will be covering this as um as somebody, okay, somebody who had just had, okay, who had just had their or uh, status post transplant. Yun lang ang sinabi, status post-transplant. Like kidney transplant, okay? So, pwedeng liver transplant, mm, kidney transplant or liver transplant, okay? Automatically, you should, you should be thinking that the patient is already immunosuppressed when we talk about transplant. Clear tayo doon? Madali? Yes. Okay tayo doon, ha? Oh, just sa mga visitation, you have to always remember visit okay the infectious last visit the immunosuppressed first nagkakaintindihan okay now the question oh are we allowed now to combine o oh, eto ang question na are we allowed now to combine infectious agents yes or no yes O, oh, sabi natin na, are we allowed to combine? O, oh, tandaan, we, o, oh, number two, we never combine. Okay, we never combine. Ang lahat ng mga immunosuppressed, okay, versus our infectious. Clear, we do not combine these two. Or else, what will happen to the immunosuppressed? They will die of infection. Clear tayo doon? Kaya nga, the main, one of the main goal or one of the main tasks of the nurse is always to perform, okay, responsible cohorting. When we talk about now cohorting, you will be the one to decide of the case whether this can be cohorted or combined. Okay, towards another patient, what is the ruling of cohorting? You can only combine, okay, infectious, okay, infected people if they have the same causative agent. Clear tayo doon. So, for example, okay, I have measles. I'm infectious, correct? Tapos, uh, ikaw, Miss Pineda, Okay, you have now your MERS, ha? Can I be combined to you? No. Why? Because we have the different pathogenic organism. Clear tayo doon. But can I combine now two measles together? Oh, okay lang because they will be treated the same naman. 
they will be tri- gi- uh, they will be given the same drugs they will be given the same supportive mechanism correct yes supportive action can i be combined now can i be combined now okay just in case meron daw oh tuberculosis to tuberculosis can i combine them together yes because they will be treated the same again nagkakaintindihan tayo doon So, ibig sabihin, ang sabi lang natin dito, we never combine lang immunosuppressed versus infectious. But, when we combine infectious, combine infectious, okay, infectious or communicable diseases, they should belong to the same causative agent. Pwede. Pwede mag-combine ba sa same causative agent? Clear tayo doon? Madali, madali. Oh, now, let's proceed now to the next one. We're done with the susceptible host. Correct? Yes, that's the number 6 e, eh. Correct? Oh, para lang klaro, eto na. So, sabi natin, when we talk about, dito ko sulat sa babaha, wala na akong sulatan sa taas. Oh. Oh. Sabi natin, when we have now our host, clear, okay, or the susceptible host, Once this host got infected already, okay, now, they could either be symptomatic or asymptomatic. Ah, when the host becomes infected, always remember, not necessarily that they are infected means that they are not going to show symptoms. Clear? Po, pwede po walang symptom or pwedeng may symptom. Nagkakaintindihan, just like in COVID, right? Correct? Oh, now, the question. If the host is now affected, okay, remember, when this host is affected or infected by the causative agent, always remember, they can either be a carrier or they can either be affected. Clear? When we talk about affected, you are affected, infected and affected, automatically, you're going to show signs and symptoms. Symptomatic. Symptomatic. Tama? When we talk about that you are a carrier, this means that you do not show any signs and symptoms, but still can spread the disease condition. So, simply means, sabi natin, you are a carrier, you are Yes. Oh, now, whether you are affected or a carrier, remember, you are going to transfer. Possible, there might be um, a transmission of the causative agent to the reservoir. Ay, ayan na. Correct. So, sabi mo, uulit na tayo sa number one. You already have your causative agent. Now, what will happen? This will now be transferred towards what? Your reservoir until it multiplies and everything else will repeat its cycle. Clear po ba tayo doon? Everything else will repeat its cycle. Repeat its cycle. Clear tayo doon? Kaya nga, chain of infection. Now, the question. Mm, alam na natin yung 1 to 6. Tama? Yes. The question in the board exam that will come out in my exam. Wow, talagang sinabi na, no? Pagka to, hindi nyo pa nasagutan, ewan ko na, ha? Oh, what is our main goal? Oh, sabi nila... to top the board exam. Okay, that's not only the uh, main goal, ano? Here, uh, in our uh, infectious diseases, always remember, the healthcare providers, healthcare providers goal, tayo yon. Ibig sabihin, that also includes the nurses, the doctors, okay, your assistants, the nursing aides, And all of those people working inside the hospital or an environment in the healthcare should, okay, the main goal, break the chain. Wow. Diba? 
Oh, kailangan daw i-break ang chain so that we can break the cycle. Tama? Yes. So, anong gagawin natin? Remember, as a healthcare provider, you have to have a keen talent in rec number one, recognizing. Lalabas sa exam. Recognizing the signs and symptoms. Eh kaya nga, we will be talking about the most common signs and symptoms, the initial manifestation, the late manifestations of some of the disease condition. Tama? Yes. And you have to know how to collect the specimen. What are the things that you're, you are expecting to be collected? O, oh, collection of specimen. Specimen. Whether this would now be serological, serological, or virological. O, di ba? Pwede naman. Pag sinabing serological, we're actually talking about our Ig, immunoglobulin. Correct? O. So, it is where, o, remember ha, your blood contains your immunoglobulin. So, we will be talking about the immunoglobulins as well later on. The IgG, IgA, IgM, IgE, IgD. Clear tayo doon? So, those are the things that we're going to talk about. So, later on, when we develop now our antibodies, also known as our immunoglobulins, that simply means one thing. You are infected. Clear tayo doon. But when we talk about the serological, always remember, it cannot detect what type of causative agent is present. Ang sinasabi lang natin, dyan sa serological, there's the presence of antibody that usually uh, proliferates first, okay, during an infection event. May lumalabas. Pero, when we talk about dun sa lumalabas na yon, we do not know the causative agent. Clear tayo doon. For us to be able to know, okay, the causative agent, it could either be, pwede rin naman, ah, uh, uh, virological, okay, for the virus, or pupwede rin naman mga smears, di ba? Bacterial studies. Bacterial studies. Clear tayo doon. So that, the laboratory can now identify kung sino-sino yung mga um, causative agents na yan. Clear po ba tayo doon? Clear. Oh, so, your second goal is to know what uh, specimen is to be collected. Clear. So, we'll be talking about those things later on. Next, we do also need to, okay, support the client's body's defense. By how? By strengthening their immunities. Di ba? Tama. And we have to tell them how to protect themselves. Correct? Oh, for example, social distancing. Tama ba yun? Are we, okay, are we responsible for the health teachings for these people so that they will not be acquiring the disease condition? Yes. Sabi, kailangan 3 to 6 feet or 1 meter. Tama? Away. Oh, dapat social distancing. How are we going to do now our hand hygiene? Diba? O. Oh. And then, lastly, of course, ang gusto ko lang sabihin ha, our least priority. This came out in the local boards. Remember, our least priority list. Priority among all of the goal, okay, is what? Sabi natin, our least priority is to identify. Identify what? Okay the antibiotic to be used. Bakit? It is not your responsibility as a nurse. Oh, remember ha? For the nurse, okay, it is not your primary responsibility to identify the drug to be utilized. Clear tayo doon. Or, sabi na lang kamo nating drugs, no? Kasi baka hindi antibiotic, antiviral naman ang binigay mo. E di mali. Oh. Or drugs. Clear po ba tayo doon? Clear. Oh, now, the question. 
So, always remember, these things can be stopped just in case one chain will lose its part. Kaya nga, sabi natin, kailangan natin talagang ma-break ang chain. Isa-isa tanggalin natin. Example, oh, remember, aside from that, ha, remember, our goal is to remove the elements. Remove. Elements. Oh, and how are we going to remove that? Sabi nga natin, okay, by health promotion. Health promotion. And what are we going to do in the health promotion? Malamang, health teachings. Tama ba yun? So, what are the things that we need to teach the client kasi lumabas isa-isa? So, number one, risk behavior kasama. Yes, risk behavior. Yes, those things that they are doing, uh, that's why they are acquiring the disease condition. So, for example, dugyot. Correct? Madume. Oh, di ba? Uh, decrease sanitation of the area o oh, problem. So, we have to teach them how to modify their risk behavior. Clear tayo doon? Oh, now, aside from that, ang tanong, when we are doing the health teachings, lumabas kay community health nursing, what is now the best method of health teaching? Oh, yun na eh. Oh, guys, ano kaya? The question, what would now be the best me best method to teach the risk behavior of the pa a patient? Sige nga. Best method. Any guess? Hand washing. Ay, very good. Hand washing. Is the health teaching sa best method for delivering the risk behavior. In general, the risk behavior is actually uh, included na dun yung hand washing. Correct. Yes, kasi nga, you're going to change the behavior of the patient. So, included na. Sinabi, yung method daw eto, nakalagay, it could either be via TV, oh, via media, pwedeng radio, pwede, okay, or pwedeng mga uh, classes, symposiums, pwede ba yan? Yes. Pero ang tanong, which among the following is the best method? Yan ang tanong kay board exam ng NLE. Kaloka, no? Pati talaga doon, kailangan talagang tirahin natin yan eh. Mm, para one time, big time ko lang sa NLE, correct? O, answer, all. Ibig sabihin, mixed type. O, yan ang best method ha. Ito ang best method. Best method. Method. Clear tayo. Ibig sabihin, utilize everything that you know. If you have the proper resources, utilize that. You have anybody from the radio? Okay, utilize that. You have anybody from the classes? Utilize that. Anybody from the community? Utilize that. Correct? So you have to utilize all the methods so that we could now ensure, okay, the distribution of all literatures. For health promotion. Clear tayo doon? Clear. Ginagawa nyo na yun sa school eh, di ba? The use of multimedia. 10 o'clock. Correct. Oh my gosh, 10 o'clock. Ang bilis naman ng oras. Ano ba naman yan? Okay. So, before we, we uh, before I give you your break time, we're going to talk about first, again, let's summarize lang ha. Okay, isummarize lang daw po natin. So, when we talk about now our chain of infection, again, what are the chain of infection? Number one, your causative agent. Number two is your reservoir. Again, eto ah, again. Oh, again. Wow, question again. Diba? <laughs> question. <laughs> reservoir. Okay, number three, portal of exit. And then number four, your mode of transmission. Number five, your portal of entry. And number six, your susceptible host. Tama ba yun? Yes. Okay. Sabi natin, what are now our strategies? Strategies. Okay. What are now our strategies to prevent our cross-contamination? Or to break the cycle? Sabi natin, okay. Okay. Pagka-causative agent, what will now be the 
strategy, of course, this would now be the doctor's responsibility. Give the appropriate drug. Give appropriate drug. Correct? Yes. So, sabi ha, okay. Give appropriate drug just in case that it's actually a microbial. Nagkakaintindihan. Pero kung ito daw ay viral, is it self-limiting? O, oh, di ba? Pagka viral, remember, all viral infections are self-limiting. Tama. Yes. Except for few. Kasi may mga few tayo, example, tumatagal dyan sa katawan mo, they do not want to come out anymore. Di ba? So, just like the HEPA B, hindi na lalabas yan. O, oh, just like the HIV, hindi na lalabas yan. Kaya nga, the question, is it self-limiting? Am I only going to give supportive intervention? Just like, uh, just just in case the patient would now develop fever, I'm going to give now uh, antipyretic, or the patient is chilling, o, di ba? May chills now, so what are going to offer? The blanket, di ba? If the patient is uh, feeling warm naman, of course, kailangan dry them. Diba? Because when they feel warm, sometimes they become diaphoretic. Correct? Yes. Comfort measures, ibig sabihin. Correct. Supportive actions lang. Now, the question. When we talk about the reserva, okay. So, sabi, we are going to, okay. The target for this reserva is that we are going to disinfect. The reserva So that this can become uh, This reserva Can now become Biologically Safe Dapat daw Biologically safe diba? So gumagamit tayo ng alcohol Chlorhexidine Tama ba yun? Sanosil Pwede rin namang Cydex Correct? So kailangan daw malinis Correct. Or bleach. Oh, di ba? Lumabas ha. Yung bleach. For disinfection of the bleach, remember, 1 is to 10. Lumabas. 1 is to 10 ang dilution. Oh, di ba? 1 cup to 9 parts of water. 1 is to 10 daw. Correct. Ang bleach ko, 1 cup. For example, 1 cup out of 10. Correct. Ganun lang daw ang dilution. Nakakapatay na. Okay. Nang... Uh, mga microorganism. Oh, hindi daw kailang concentrated. Galit na galit ka naman sa bacteria, sa CR, di ba? Concentrated bleach ang nilalagay mo. Sayang! Ganon din ang efek eh. So, you don't need to do that. 1 is to 10. Clear. O, oh, sabi natin, we do have now your portal of entry and portal of exit, di ba? Let's uh, group this together. O, oh, so, what are we going to do now so that this will not, okay, interplay a role when it comes to infection. E di ang gawin, i-cover. I-cover natin ang nose. I-cover natin ang eyes. I-cover natin ang mouth. Tama? Yes. So, sabi natin, protective covering. That's the main reason we are going to talk about the PPE later. When is the time that we're going to make use of the surgical mask? When is the time that are we going to um, make use of the gloves? Kailan daw natin gagamitin ang face shield? Kailan daw gagamitin ang eye shield? Ganon. So, those are the things that we are going to talk about. Now, the mode of transmission, on the other hand, we are going to talk about the isoprec. Okay? Also known as your isolation precaution measures. What are the different types now of mode of transmission and how are we going to uh, uh, to protect ourselves now as a healthcare provider and to protect the patient? So, meron niya mga ano eh. We have now different guidelines to be followed under CDC. You have to uh, implement that as well. Correct? Yes. O sige, sabi natin. And of course, sabi, ay, eto. Alam na alam ko na to eh. Let's just go back a little bit ha. Remember that we have your PPEs and how do we remove and... Okay. How do we wear and remove the PPEs? 
Ganun eh. Correct? Yes. Do you still remember my PPE wave? The PPE wave? Sige nga. Who can still demonstrate the PPE wave? How do we uh, remove and how do we uh, use our PPE? Wear and remove. Ala! O sige, tingnan nga natin si Ryan. Ryan, can you demonstrate? Wow eh, no? Wala na kasing demonstration ngayon. ba? Diba? Online demonstration na lang. Wala nang rep them. <laughs> Go, Ryan. Okay, Ryan! Susera ka. Go! Open your cam. Paano daw? Hindi, nakikita ko si Ryan. Naka-open ng cam. Oh, ano? Paano daw? Of course, with ah. Yung ganto, di ba? How are we going to use and how are we going to remove? Di ba? Natatandaan ba yun, guys? So, in using daw, we have now yung wearing of PPE. Sino daw yun? We have the mask. We have the gloves. Okay. We have the gown. We have the goggles. Tama ba yan? And we have the, ayan. O, oh, meron ka ng mga PPEs. Ang tanong na lang, which comes first? Because sometimes they will be asking you such in the actual exam. Uh, you're going to make a sequence, no? You're going to choose a sequence that will be presented to you. So, ang gawin mo na lang ka mo, when you go out, everybody now, please do this all together now. When you go out, when you go out, Okay, look at this. One, two, three, four. Parang lumabas lang. Tama? Correct? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, one is gown, two is mask, three is goggles. Kung gusto mo pa ilagay yung face shield, face shield, bago ka mag gloves. Gets mo? Lumabas lang ako. Alam ko na. Everybody do this now. Lumabas lang ako. Alam ko na. Di ba? Oh. Correct? Correct. So, one, two, three, four. Ganun na sequence. Which comes first? Hand washing or wearing of gloves? Hand washing? <laughs> Sabi nila, parang nakakatanga naman yung question. <laughs> Guys, of course, hand washing first. Do not do your hand washing after you wear your gloves. ba? Diba? Anong use? Wala nang use. Correct? Oh, kaya nga, sabi natin, we do our hand washing first, then we do now the PPE wave. Tama ba? Yes. Oh, hindi po pwedeng PPE wave, then we do our hand washing. Hindi po pwedeng ganun. Mali. Oh, Next tayo. And how are we going to remove now our PPE? Go, guys. Come on. So, when we come out, we're going back. Yun lang ang gagawin. So, when we come out, we're going back. Correct? Yes. So, when we do uh, go back, so, one, anong ginawa? Gloves. Two. Mask and face shield. Three. Gown. Oh, para hindi malimutan. Go in front and make a wave. Tama? Go in front and make a wave. This would now give, okay, give you a cue that this mask should be removed last. Clear tayo doon. Clear. Oh, again. How are we going to remove now? One, two, three, four. Oh, di ba? Talaga may ganun. Oh, everybody now. Nahiya pa sila. Hindi naman nakikita. Oh, correct. <laughs> Tama? Madali lang ba? Kasi sometimes, if you do memorize a lot of things, eh tapos, and everything else becomes complicated, it's, it's really hard to, okay, recall all the concepts that you have learned. Kaya nga, you make a strategy so that it's easy for you to implement and recall. Nagkakaintindihan po ba? So again, balik lang tayo ha. How are you going to do the PPE wave? Going out. ba? Diba? And then, going in. And then, make a wave. O, ba? Diba? PPE wave ha. Uy, sa akin nag-originate yan. So, para it's easy. Correct? Uy, CDC yan. ba? Diba? But the wave, it's mine. Correct? Kaya nga sabi nila... 
inspiration way. Wow! Inspiration! Kasi nga, di ba? Inspiration. Di ba ganyan yan? Sean Wave. O, oh, di ba? Inspiration Wave. Tama ba? <laughs> Sabi ko, ano ang pinagtuturong mo dito? Sabi ni Sir Robby. O, oh, correct? Correct. O, oh, sige. Now, question. O, oh, we're done with the uh, we're done with the PEO. And then, uh, uh, POE, sorry. The um, portal of exit and the portal of entry. Now, and the last, how are we going to increase the Okay, immunity of the patient. O, di ba? How are we going to make the host less susceptible? By increasing the strategy, increasing the immunity. Clear tayo doon? So that infection will not take place. Tama? O, kagaya ng boosting your immunity with vitamin C and zinc. Ganon. Correct? Yes. O, now, ang question... What if the question to be asked to you, what is now the priority when somebody got infected? O, oh, yun ang tanong eh, no? Before we move forward, ano daw ang priority natin when somebody, get, uh, when somebody got infected? Ano? Sabi natin, pagka meron ng infection, we isolate the patient. Ah! Remember, we isolate the patient. Are we going to provide now a private room? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Are we going to provide now a private room? Yes or no? Yes. Clear tayo doon. So that they will not be able to cause any cross-contamination towards another person. 